Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. Back on the steam pipe project again, and we have got everything put back in here for brazing. So I've got everything pretty much set up where I want it, and I'm gonna kind of bring you in here and zoom you in a little bit so you can see the setup we've got, and uh, we'll get going trying to put this thing together. We'll start out with, guys, we got our top flange put back in here and got our little steam pipe ring. It's in between here. That's the gasket that kind of goes in between them. All that's properly positioned. Everything is uh, oriented as it should be. And uh, now we'll go down here to the bottom end, which is the, the more important part of what we're working on. Down here on the bottom, of course, we got everything in place. So uh, I first bolted down the actual flange and then we put the pipe in on top of it, got everything lined up like we wanted on the bottom and uh, lined up like we wanted on the top. And just like our measurements, uh, just like we measured, everything was fit very nicely. So did a good job on uh, getting all those measurements done right. Always a little bit nervous about that kind of stuff, but just right. I think what we're gonna do now is come in and start putting some heat on this with a rosebud tip and we're gonna tack it in place with some braze. Uh, not gonna try to braze it completely in place right now, but just get it where it's uh, strong enough to hold and we can get it back to the shop and do a proper braze job on it where I can move it around and really have access to everything. We've been uh, soaking this heat in here for a while now and I've got I feel pretty good. I've switched over to a brazing tip and uh, we're going to continue on um, and start trying to braze in. Like I said, we're just going to tack it in place. So uh, let me get this torch going. All right, I'm going to start in the back. Probably not gonna be able to see me do everything, but uh, I'm gonna get the hardest part done first. There's the front side. It actually uh, brazed so good, I just went ahead and brazed across that whole side on the front and most of on the back. The back side was a little bit tougher. I was uh, having difficulty getting up in there, but now uh, we're just gonna go off and leave this and let it cool down nice and slow. Probably just let it sit here for a couple of hours and we can hopefully get that part pulled back out. And once I get on the bench, uh, we should be able to finish brazing it all in place. So uh, we're just gonna let it sit. Let this pipe cool down a couple of hours now and I have pulled it back out of the locomotive and we're going to finish brazing it over here on the bench. Now I went ahead and, and brazed solid across the front side. I'm kind of wishing I had just gone ahead and done it while it was in the train. It was a little bit awkward to get back behind there, but this is, I'm having to mount it kind of up in the vise just to get a good surface in there, but I think we can do it. So anyway, we're going to go in here. I'm going to have to soak this with heat again and then come in here and braise it. And I'm gonna have to reposition it in several different places to get all the different areas around this completely brazed up and sealed up. Um, and that's what we're gonna work on now. So I'm gonna probably skip the, the rosebud action and we'll bring you in here and show you some more brazing in a bit. All right, we got a good bit of heat soaked into this part. So I've switched over to a brazing tip and we're gonna continue to focus some heat in here till we get up the temperature and finish uh, brazing that across. Starting to see a little color down in there. You know, I like for my brazen to be just kind of a, a little bit of a cherry red color in the metal.
All right, I'm happy with that. We're gonna go ahead and turn this part around now where I can get to another area and uh, continue brazing. Before I do, I think I'm just gonna take my wire wheel here and just kind of clean that slag and stuff off. All right, I think we got it all brazed up. Last thing we're gonna do here is just wrap this whole thing up in my blanket, my welding blanket here, and we're gonna let her cool down. All right, I think that'll be fine right there. We're just gonna go off and let that sit. Uh, probably wait till tomorrow to come back out here and do anything with it. Well guys, I think we're about through now with our steam pipe project. I've got all this thing brazed up. Uh, after we brazed it up, we wrapped it up in that blanket. Like I said, we let it cool down nice and slow overnight. I went back the next day and got it. And I did do a little bit of grinding around here just to kind of clean some things up. Uh, there was some braze because we, we had to turn this thing and it kind of dripped down some of the sides. And it just, uh, the actual braze joints that I did look, look really nice, but when you had all that dripping going on over there, it looked kind of ratty in some places. So I, I just went ahead and cleaned it up with the grinder. Uh, I left the stuff on the sides pretty much like they were. Uh, also got inside this uh, like we had done out in the video. I don't know if, we, if, you, if you saw that or not, but I actually brazed the inside of this uh, ring. I had done some weld prep on both ends to kind of leave a gap in there. That was really difficult to get down in there with the brazing rod and the torch. The, the torch was kind of pushing the braze in when I was really kind of needing it to be pushing in from the other direction. Uh, but I was successful in getting that gap brazed up on the inside as well, which I think is gonna add to the strength, but also that'll be kind of fill in that gap where there's not a place for trash or there shouldn't be any trash coming through here, but steam, moisture, whatever, getting in there and hopefully seal it up a little bit better. Um, now with that, it was, it was kind of messy on the inside. So I got in with a die grinder again and got all that you know, nice and smooth through here. It's not restricting any of the flow or anything like that. Real happy with the way it turned out. Um, and anyway, it's, it's pretty much ready to go back into the locomotive right now. The other thing that I went ahead and did while we had it out was I went ahead and made a new set of uh, steam pipe rings. So these steam pipe rings basically will sit on the bottom of this and it has th that little ball joint down here in the bottom that fits into that socket where it can kind of find its, uh, its, its spot. And also as it, the boiler heats up, it's gonna probably you know, move a little bit with thermal reaction going on. And that it kind of will allow that to just automatically reseat itself. So I made these out of bronze. Uh, we, and, and I didn't video this. I actually uh, made a set of these a year or two ago. I've got a video on how to make these. 
the ones we did before though, we made out of cast iron. And uh, at the time we were doing research on what material these should be made out of. It was interesting when we pulled the steam pipes out, there were some in there that were made out of brass. There were some in there that were made out of steel. Uh, I started doing some research to try to figure out what the proper material is. And it seems like there's a lot of correct answers for that question. Uh, in several of my books that I have, steam books, old railroading books, that talk about maintenance, every one of them said that these were made out of cast iron. And uh, I actually talked with a couple of guys that, are, that I know that are in the uh, restoration business for steam locomotives. And, and they all kind of said, yeah, I've seen them out of iron, I've seen them out of brass. And they kind of agreed, yeah, cast iron's probably the way to go. Uh, when we found later the blueprints that we have for the uh, steam pipe out of a similar locomotive made by the same company, just a larger one than ours, clearly says on the prints that these were made out of brass. So uh, we decided, hey, while we got it apart, we'll just go ahead and make some new ones. Uh, they should, you know, we, one, one of them, the one on the bottom, was a little bit damaged from where the steam had been leaking. It had kind of eroded in some places. So I made these out of brass and uh, I put a link in here to the video that I did on the cast iron ones a few years ago. I used the exact same process. Uh, like I said, we just, we actually used uh, bronze. Uh, I, I couldn't find a piece of brass large enough to do this that wasn't gonna cost a fortune. I was able to get some bronze that was actually tubing. Uh, so it didn't, it wasn't solid. So it really cut down on the price. It was still a couple hundred dollars for a little one foot piece, but uh, I think this is gonna seal up better. The idea with the softer material is, is that when you clamp everything down, it kind of deforms a little bit and, and helps seat in there if you don't have a perfect seat in the bottom. So anyway, got those made, those are ready to go. Next is just to get out there to the museum and get this thing put in. We are waiting right now. We've got some, uh, uh, some uh, it's, it's a film that you put in, in, in these gasket joints here. Uh, that was recommended to us to kind of help with the sealing up. Uh, some guys in the steam business recommended a certain product. In the past, we've just been using a copper-based, like RTV, uh, silicone-type product. Uh, this other product, I think, is going to perform a lot better. And we're waiting on that to come in. It should be in any day. As soon as it does, we're going to get out there and get this stuff put back in the locomotive and uh, hopefully have her back up and going. Not hopefully, we will have her back <laughs> up and going uh, by this weekend. So. Uh, okay. Alright, what can I do to hit? Anything? Um, I'm gonna bear hug it up in there. If you can go ahead and try to maybe get those uh, bottom. Well, hold on now. Where are they at now? They're right here in front of me. Yeah, I see them. Yeah. Let me have this that should just one of them sticks mm -hmm. turn that stick over and it's three eighths on the other side so okay the way you need it if you need it i think we're probably fine and that one there is fine. So it's a lot easier without them thin, thin things in the way. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep them all lined up. All right, hand me uh, wrenches. Yeah, everybody's hollering. Don't forget to put the anti seize on there. Well, we almost did, but. We got you covered. Graphite fell to the bottom of it. What's the other step? Petrolatum. Looks like it's on the top. All right, I'm just gonna, we'll tighten those up good after I get these down there. See if I can turn that over. Maybe I can get around that piece down here. Yeah, get a little longer stroke. You got that bottom one a little bit snug? 
Yeah. So guys, I think we got this thing all buttoned up and ready to go back together, or it is back together. I will comment that the, the sealant that we put on this is a product called uh, Copalite, C-O-P-A-L-T-I-T-E, -E, Copalite, Copalite. Yeah, and uh, that was actually recommended by Randy Richards. Randy is a former steam guy, worked on marine applications many years ago, and he highly recommended that. It's made for these flanges. Uh, it's made for those kind of joints in there, and uh, it should help just kind of keep everything sealed up nice. So that's the game plan there. We will have to cure this stuff. It recommends uh, it needs to get up about 300 degrees for about 15 minutes before we we put any pressure on the pipe. But when we fire this thing up, I don't think we'll have any problems uh, doing that. There won't be any pressure on there until we get it to full steam anyway. And it takes a good two hours uh, to heat this thing up from cold. And just having the, the smoke and the gas and the, everything coming through the boiler should, uh, should get it there. But we're gonna, on the first firing, just heat it up real slow, uh, make sure we get that cured in there real good. That's the game plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the, the, the petticoat put in here, which is kind of a funnel-shaped piece that pulls all the, the exhaust gases up the smokestack. And once that's done, we can put the front back on and I think we'll be ready to fire up. Here we go, guys. We're all finished up. Let's take a peek inside. Well, there she is. Steam pipe is installed. Petticoat's back in. We got our steam pipe nozzle put in there. Um, she's ready to go. So I think tomorrow we're going to fire her up, let that sealant cure really good, and uh, go from there check it out and make sure we don't have any leaks. Uh, I don't anticipate there being any problems. I think we got a good fix here. Well, I think that's gonna be a wrap. Uh, I think we have successfully completed this steam pipe project. We've got it done on time. And I was actually wrong. I was thinking we were gonna run the locomotive this Saturday, but it's not until next Saturday. So we actually got this done with a week to spare rather than two days to spare, which is even better. So anyway, we'll check her out tomorrow, but like I said, I don't anticipate any problems. And with that, we're gonna check this project off the list, be done with it, and try to get on some other projects we got lined up and ready to go. So guys, as always, uh, leave me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, with that, we'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.